Uh, good evening. Thank you, everyone, for um, joining us tonight. Um, there's been, I know it's a very busy time of the year for a lot of people, but um, a lot of people have shown interest in this, and I think there's around over 70 people that, that have signed up. So uh, I guess there will be more people joining us later. Uh, yeah, so I just want to say that I'm sure you're aware that we are recording at the moment. Uh, and uh, first off, I really want to thank um, Asian Canadian Asian Migration Studies Program and Slice Mango Collective for partnering with us, Heritage Vancouver, on this event. And we have our two special guests, Claire and Bennett. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I want to start by letting Sheila, um, just Sheila Cahill is one of our board members at Heritage Vancouver, and she's just going to say a, a quick word about us for you. Thanks, Phil, and good evening, everyone. And it's just a real pleasure to be here, and I'm so excited about tonight. Um, so thank you, everyone, for uh, for participating and uh, and for showing up. I just wanted to say um, that um, a lot of what we do is really about giving thanks, and uh, I wanted to uh, send a shout out to our members. Uh, some of who have joined us this evening and so thank you so much we value your support of our independent viewpoint as we work to conserve layers of place community and memory that reflect vancouver's diverse heritage i also want to thank our donors and funders uh, your generous support funds our ongoing programming public forums educational commentary and research initiatives so thank you to you. And I also want to thank our volunteers. Um, we really just couldn't do this without you. So, um, you know, we really appreciate your passion, your commitment, and um, you being here for our society. So thank you so much. Now, if you like what you experienced today, uh, please do think about uh, joining us, uh, either as a member, a donor, or a volunteer. And I'm going to very quickly pop in the link, uh, the um, the connection to our uh, society so if you are uh, you do uh, enjoy the the event this evening um, please uh, do click on the link I just realized that I probably didn't send it to everyone so um, one moment and I will send it to everyone <laughs> and um, please you know click on the link and um, you will see a lot of information about who we are what we do and why we are such a great organization uh, to uh, be a part of. So thank you everyone for being here. I appreciate your time. Thanks. Thank you, Sheila. Um, I want to start by talking about us holding this event on traditional and ancestral lands that were taken away from the Musqueam, Squamish and Tsleil-Waututh. What does it mean to be a heritage organization like we are to practice heritage on these lands? How do we see ourselves on these lands? These are very deep, not simple questions that are especially relevant to us as an organization. Uh, this is because the heritage field has had the power to decide what matters and what gets attention. And often what has happened is that the histories and cultures of the three nations whose territory we are on is written out and relegated to a footnote. Our field is quite different from what it was a few years ago. Heritage isn't simply about the beautiful heritage buildings anymore. There is a much greater awareness that heritage is about power and heritage is about selection. So our reflections on these questions determine how my organization is trying to change how we practice heritage. One part of that change is the concept behind this event tonight, listening room. Traditionally, heritage experts decided for others what is important. But we feel that our role is different. We need to learn more and understand better what has meaning for different groups of people across the city. And we need to be better learners and listeners rather than talkers. When uh, Sydney Lyons, um, she's one of our volunteers who helped put this together who helped put this, who put, helped put together this series of events, heard this explanation. She said, um, why don't you call it listening room then? So this is how tonight came about. It is for us to listen to and learn from our two guests, Claire and Bennett, 
about why this food hub near Joy Station is meaningful to this neighborhood and community. While we have two guests that I'll be speaking to, I want to note that we will have a Jamboard open so that anyone here can post their thoughts or post their experience or post their stories about why this place is important to them throughout the evening. And Kathleen from Slice Mango Collective, she will be moderating this Jamboard. Tonight is recorded, as I said earlier, and what we learn, including what is submitted on the Jamboard, will be taken to our next session next year called Shaping Vancouver, when we will apply that to a conversation on urban planning and the food hub. So with that, I want to give a chance or most of the time to our two guests tonight um, and maybe have Claire first introduce herself and then Bennett. Um, Claire, if you can introduce yourself and also kind of give an introduction, a brief introduction about the, the development so everybody um, just, just has a reminder of what the development is about and why we're talking about this. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Um, hi, folks. My name is Claire Bacchio. I am one of the co-founders of Slice Mango Collective. And in March of uh, 2021, uh, Slice Mango Collective launched a campaign with other um, organizations um, called Slice of Support. And it was for, it was a campaign that was launched because of uh, redevelopment that was happening um, in Joyce Collingwood uh, that would be affecting uh, six food businesses, five of which were Filipino and one uh, which was Chinese. Um, and the reason this is really important for our organization to uh, mobilize the community uh, and work with our community with this is because uh, Joyce Collingwood is uh, kind of like a little bit of a, a hub for uh, Filipino Canadians in Metro Vancouver. So it was really important for us um, to kind of um, get people to know that this was happening because when our team heard about it, we were genuinely surprised that no, like, n like not much of a fuss was made about it and no one uh, had heard about it, even though there seemed there was like a, a deadline for the end of March for, for this uh, redevelopment to be happening. Um, so yeah, uh, and Sydney has put a link in the, the chat so people can um, uh, take a closer look at that. Thank you. Uh, Bennett, would you mind introducing yourself? Hi, I'm Bennett Kanata. Hello, everyone. Um, honor of uh, Plato Filipino in Joyce Collingwood area. We've been in the area for about five years now, but I believe um, those beside me uh, has been there for decades already. So um, I, I have been um, called on, on this uh, uh, kind of the, what Slice Mango is doing. We, uh, they approach us on uh, because uh, they were surprised about what's going to happen in Joyce Collingwood. We were also surprised about it. But uh, we were told right after they made the consultation, the owners have uh, consulted us. So yeah, let's start a little bit all. So Bennett, what does this neighborhood mean to you? What is your relationship to this to this neighborhood? And why did you choose to have your business there? What does this mean to you? Um, when I first came in Vancouver, uh, I live in that area, right? You know, um, like three minutes walk from where I am right now, where the business is. And I've, I saw so many Filipinos there. Uh, being a Philippine, Philippine government officials who were assigned here, I chose that area to live in because that's where I can get close to Filipinos who's migrating here uh, and get close to the workers that were working for them. So Claire, you don't live in the area or you, so what is, how do you connect to this place? Uh, right, so 
my story is like similar to Tita Bennett's in which like Joyce Collingwood was also my favorite, uh, not my favorite, sorry. I just, I read favorite and then uh, my first neighborhood uh, when I immigrated and like my earliest formed memories of just home was in that neighborhood. Uh, my family immigrated in 2000 and uh, yeah, I, I just remember growing up there and even, even though I no longer live in that neighborhood anymore, um, it's still a place that I frequent quite often. Um, my, my niece goes to, to school in the area. Um, like I, you know, I hang out with friends in that area. So uh, my connection there is that it was like what home was to me. It was like the first place I called home. And I have really fond memories of like childhood there. So in both your experiences, is, is that like quite, uh, is that um, what a lot of people feel? It's, it's like their first home, even though they don't live in the, in, in the neighborhood. So it is a destination also, right? For, for a lot of people. It is, it is. I believe so. Yeah, I, I feel like a lot of like Filipinos and like the, in just in Metro Van, like no, that's where to get like Filipino food. Um, because again, it has just like the businesses there. It has a sorry, sorry store. It has Plato, it has, um, it has Pampanga. Like, like even like, this is a very funny thing. My nephew's baptism was at St. Mary's and then my cousin ordered food from Pampanga. And again, we didn't celebrate in the neighborhood cause we don't live there, but we still, you know, we still had those like ties there. Um, and I find there is like a pretty big Filipino community that um, that surrounds themselves there. So Ben, I heard you know you, you you've been speaking about this. You were you were in the in, in a couple of the newspapers, and there was a there was another sort of town hall a number of months ago. Um, but can you kind of talk about like your 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 customer like? What what is a what are who, who are your customers and 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 what are what are they like? Do they live in a neighborhood? Um, You'll be surprised. Our customers is around Metro Vancouver, because that's why we call it Filipino Hub, because everyone everyone stop over just to get their food. Uh, our customers they're from young generation to, to, you know, to not so young generations. And, um, but definitely they are the ones who's working two jobs in a day, three even. And those are the people like crushing through or not having the luxury of time to, to just dine and, you know, for so long. And, um, but on weekends you would see them like meeting with other friends because they feel that the hub is their home. It's a neighborhood that's been there for three decades and it's been a significant, significant place of culture and variety. Probably that's the one um, calling them out to be in that area. So I've been told by a lot of people about like, the specific type of style of food that you serve at your restaurant, right? And and that's called the, sorry, I'm, I'm going to mispronounce Turo, turo. Right? And, Carindaria and, style? Yeah. It's a cafeteria <laughs> style, Carindaria style, but in, in the Philippines, we call it turo, turo. It's it's like every, every dishes are served in front of you. You will just choose. It's like point, turo, 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 turo is a Tagalog for point, point. It's like you will point any of the dishes that you like that's why it's called turo turo and then that's it you'll eat and then go move move along to another place you wanted to be i, I also want to comment that even before like plato was there when i was a kid like all the, <laughs> the restaurants there that were filipino but i don't think it's the same restaurants i think they're different ones but the ones that were there were also like carinderia style like you you would point in Again, like it was just like part of the neighborhood. Like the restaurants there served that style of food, um, and I remember like 
visiting after church or after school, like with my, or like after preschool, technically with my parents, like my dad would take me and like, like we'd have that style of, of, of cooking. Um, so it was, it's just always nice even going back to like Plato and Spain, that's like the, like the style of food that you serve there. So this this style of food, it, it, this is the style that suits your the, your sort of customers who are working two three jobs. Is that is that the best the one that suits them well? Yeah, yeah, because it's fast, quick served, and it's easy easy easily choose. You can easily choose, and um, probably the one that you're craving for is there for that day. Probably that's why you know. They were so um, relaxed and uh, uh, it's so easy for them to get what they want for the day. Right. So how have, I know there's the two of you, but I know that Claire, you know, you, you went around and did public engagement when the um, development consultation period started, right? And you talked with people on the ground. I think you also talked to business owners Right. So Claire, can you tell me about what, how people were reacting and what people were saying? Uh, right. So when we were doing the slice of uh, support campaign, just to get some context for folks, um, Slice Mango and then also other like youth uh, from like UBC and just from around the, uh, from the community and from around the area were in front of like those businesses kind of trying to talk to people who are coming in, wondering if they knew what was happening. Um, and then a uh, couple of us, uh, shout out to Will and Joey. Uh, we went to like the other businesses down uh, Joy Street to talk to like the owners and be like, can we put up these flyers? Do you know what's happening down the street? Um, and it was a really interesting experience because um, I found that a lot of people who were coming to these restaurants were not fully aware of what was going on, um, even though they were coming to these places like daily or like pretty regularly. Um, so we found that really interesting that like folks who, you know, frequent these businesses didn't realize that they were at risk. Um, and I remember when we were talking to the other business owners down the street, not only were they very aware of what was going on, they were very open to us having flyers up and very supportive of what we were doing. And I remember this one business owner, uh, he like, was I think he owned like one of the little like convenience stores again down down Joy Street, um, and he was so passionate about we, what we were doing, even though it wasn't like his business that was being threatened. Um, I remember him saying, "Oh, it's always like this," and he was pretty angry about that. He's like, "It's always like this," like, <laughs> and you know, they they tell us like they tell us about these things last minute. And then they bring us to, and he was talking about the city is like, oh, like the city and these developers bring us to these events to, to try and like get us to say something. But in reality, they're just talking at us. Um, and I remember being so struck by that because again, like his business wasn't being threatened, but he still felt so strongly that was happening to like Plato and Bambanga and like, you know, all the, the stores in that, in that like little part of the neighborhood. Um, so yeah, it was a really, it was a really interesting experience. And it was like, it was, it was, it was a little nerve wracking because it was one of like our first like bigger events and it was still, you know, like we were still on a, we're still on a pandemic. So it was challenging, um, but it was interesting to connect to the community in that way and um, see their like surprise and their like passion for these places. Um, yeah, I, it, it was a, it was a really, um, it was a really, neat experience I wish I didn't have to I, I wish I didn't have to do it because you know I had to do it because these businesses were at risk but it was a wonderful way to like connect with the community and and like feel like the presence of like the Filipinx community here and also folks who weren't Filipino were still present and were still frequenting these places and still felt really passionate about what was happening to these businesses um, so it, 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 it gave me the sense that this wasn't just an issue with um, the Filipino community, but was also an issue just like within the neighborhood. Like the business owners are very aware about like the redevelopments happening around them. 
Um, and I think they're very aware that, you know, it could be that. So Bennett, were you surprised to see all this, all these people coming out and, and, and talking about this and, and trying to, um, you know, make people aware of what it's, what is happening? Yeah, I actually cried. <laughs> I actually so emotional when they did it because it's, it's, it's like, that's the time I realized that we've made an impact to the community. What are your customers saying? Um, they were sad. If I may talk in Filipino, um, what's so heartbreaking is <clears throat> when they ask me where they, were, where, where they are supposed to be going when we're gone. Yeah, when they ask me where they could get food easily and run through to their second job, third job. Um, <clears throat> when they ask me how can they meet their friends easily because when they say oh let's go to Joy Station and eat in Plato, Kumare, Pampanga uh, buy groceries in Sari Sari in K Market it's so easy it's like when, when they go there they have a place to be with their close their close friends with which they haven't seen for like one week because they have like long weekdays for work. Yeah, they were definitely surprised of what's gonna happen. They were just informed when that big billboard was you know, installed in front of us. But prior to that, they, um, they made a consultation, but not, not too many people know about it. Not too many people are aware of it until such time that they put the board in it. So we hear this a lot with, you know, other businesses, right? That, that, you know, a lot of businesses aren't just businesses, right? They, like, there's a, there's a deeper role that they play, right? And, and people connect to them on a much deeper level. And, and I, with listening to, to you two and, and reading the, the other sort of stories on this, um, it sounds like this is really a very important uh, cultural destination and a cultural place for the Filipino Canadian community. Um, so I, I kind of want to ask you both, um, like, what does being Filipino Canadian in Vancouver mean to you? I can, I can start with that since you already, you already spoke, so I'll give you time to collect your thoughts. Um, well, uh, being Filipino Canadian uh, growing up in Vancouver, I think it again, because I, Joyce Collingwood was my first neighborhood, I was surrounded by a lot of like Filipino influences because of that. Um, although we're specifically talking about like these, these businesses um, and like these food, like hubs were like, the neighborhood is also like full <laughs> of immigrants, right? As people Bennett said earlier, there are like workers, like Filipino workers live there. Um, again, a lot of my family <laughs> lived there. Um, I still live there. Um, so I, I think growing up for me, it was really wonderful to feel connected to my, my culture and my heritage because of that neighborhood. Um, and I think my parents did a really great job in, in making me feel connected to that culture and heritage, even when we moved out of that neighborhood. Um, and I think being Filipino Canadian means just having a lot of like complicated feelings about like those labels um, about like like growing up and seeing media and not like looking like the like the people on tv or reading about or like reading about people who share their culture as you um, and that's like a, a weird, like mixed messages thing, right? Because I felt so secure in my culture because of my family and like my neighbors um, and my community. But then also just like being Canadian also meant not that connectedness. And it, it's interesting, right? And um, now that I'm older, 
those labels are also really complicated. Um, a lot of my friends are Tagalog or Ilocano and um, my family is Cebuano. So then like we're from different islands and we have different traditions and food and cultures. Like literally at the beginning of this year uh, with like the sliced mango team, I learned like all of them except for me didn't know like like knew about these certain dishes and like they have like there's like specific Tagalog words that I just never learned because my family doesn't speak Tagalog we speak Saya um so yeah like that Filipino part of my culture it, like my identity is complicated and then being Canadian and then that's like that's complicated too um we we talked about being on like un, like unseated and stolen land um yeah, my, my easy answer is it's complicated. <laughs> I feel like I want to hear Tita Venet's uh, answer as well, because I feel like I can talk about this a lot. Um, Tita? <laughs> okay. Yeah, everywhere. Um, representation is so important. And this area seems to provide Filipinos, as well as other fellow ethnic groups we share the space with, a space of celebration of our culture and the importance of the vibrance and meaning. Our community represents in our, our diverse uh, country. Filipinos are also well known to be absolutely passionate in sharing the fruits of our culture. And this have acts as an opportunity to share our sacred and beloved practices we experience growing up to everyone. Uh, Filipinos are always so proud to be recognized and, it's, and it expresses great empowerment to appreciate our roots and honor the union that has been cultivated for decades in this space. So yeah, sharing our culture to everyone, um, showing them our roots or um, making them aware that we are from the land that provides um, love or hospitality, care, uh, well, um, this, this place is so lucky. Actually, I'm always telling them that, you know, Filipino, Filipinos are always there to support everyone. If I may say it generally. So being in adapting a, Can a, a Canadian um, environment, it's really such a blessing also for everyone, I believe. Ben, I, I just want you to I just want to let you know that I'm getting a message that um, if you if you want to explain or quote something in Tagalog, um, then there we, we can translate, not me, but there are people that can translate that. Um, Again, sorry, or, I didn't hear that. If if you feel like you want to explain or quote something in Tagalog, then then there are people who can translate that. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, like if it's easier for you, Tita, to, to speak in Tagalog, just just say it in Tagalog. We have yeah. people who it's, will... It's, it's, in both. it's just that I have sore throat. Okay. <laughs> it's so hard for me to talk right now. <laughs> I've been here for four, three, four days. So I'm, I'm curious to... Um, because, Claire, you, you, you used the word heritage and, and Bennett used the word roots. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm curious to hear you... Um, explain is, is that word something that you you relate with like how do you feel about this word heritage um because you know we 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 approached you right we came to you and and i don't know if you thought like hey you're the heritage group you're supposed to protect heritage but i i think that you know what you're talking about like your culture food culture you know that's not something that has traditionally been so um you know, a bit of focus of, of any sort of heritage programs. Um, it's, it's, you're pretty much unsanctioned, right? What you're, what is valuable to you, right? So can you kind of talk about that? How you feel about that? Yeah, um, I think I remember um, being really curious about why Heritage Vancouver Society was reaching out to us. Again, because like my impression of what the heritage field is, so you explained this earlier, uh, was like, old buildings and it, like heritage is really um, focused on that. Um, I mean, not that the businesses aren't like focused, like not that the buildings don't have a 
businesses aren't uh, located in buildings or in a place, but um, I don't know, it was, it was really interesting to start having conversations uh, with you and like the other Heritage Vancouver uh, volunteers about kind of expanding heritage from just like old buildings that look from, like from a certain time period to, to, to really expanding heritage into being like a living and breathing thing. And like Filipino heritage is, you know, food is a really big part of that. Um, because for me now, after, you know, having worked with you for a while um, and having all these conversations, heritage is, um, heritage is about what you want to preserve and keep for the future generations. Like I'm still 23, I know I'm very young and everyone's gonna <laughs> get a comment on that. But like, I do have like a brother, like a younger brother and like nieces and nephews. And, and for me, like their Filipino heritage is so important for me to like share with them. Like their Cebuano heritage is, is really important. Um, because it's something, again, I think it's not just about like preservation, but it's about like, like being able to pass something on to them and letting them, them take that and, and make something out of it, you know? Like have them define what Cebuano culture, Filipino culture is for them and letting them move forward with that as they want. Um, I don't know if that made sense, but that's like, how I envision like heritage um, in my family, at least. Bennett, what do you want to pass on? What do you think is important to pass on? Pass on, um, in what sense? <laughs> like, um, the what part of your culture do you think it's important for younger people to, to take over? Yeah, definitely, yeah. Uh, Actually, uh, as, I, uh, as I've said before, uh, I've always had this uh, wish or dream for Filipinos to unify in all sense of life. One, one of my wishes uh, as immigrants, make our motherland proud without forgetting where we came from. That's what I want young generations to, to always um, remember. It's... For me, it's truly really been such a blessing to be given a chance to serve our Kababayans by putting up a business like this that will remind everyone of home. Being one of the businesses who has given a chance to serve the community, it is a space where we can continue to remind ourselves the heart of our Filipino culture. It's the Filipino dishes. Filipinos love food. <laughs> They always love to gather. When they gather, if it's 10 people, they'll make food for 20 people. <laughs> I, I think everybody would agree. If it's like 50 people, they would make it for 100 people because it is the Filipino cuisine that's the heart of Filipino culture. Um, I would also want to continue to remind everyone of our wonderful cuisine, and especially the younger generations, and keeping the significance of our nation and culture alive in continuing our legacy. So, you know, your younger, younger ones would not forget what is adobo, what is sinigang, and, and what is um, paxio, those things. <laughs> I'm getting hungry, Tita. <laughs> like, I my parents literally cooked adobo for dinner. So I'm like, she's right. I need to have adobo right now. Yeah, and I, 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 like, it's, I love it's, that. Yeah, it's just food. But definitely when you say sinigang, when you say adobo, when you say paxio, it's like, it's very Filipino. It, it, it's, it's, it's those words that would bring them back to their roots that would remind them of their motherland, that their motherland is a good cook of a sinigang, whether it's fish or whether it's pork. Thank you. Alisa, can you put up the, the image? 
so I want to ask this question. Um, this is the um, illustration that was um, created for this talk. And um, I want, so this was done by Slice Mango Collective by Helena Escariaga. Uh, Hel and yeah, Helena Escariaga. <laughs> thank you. And I want to ask you, when you see this image, what is that? What is that? What do you what do you see when you see this image? Like, why why is this the image? And then when you see this image, what does it mean to you? Yeah. So so this image is um, first of all, Plano is an amazing graphic designer. So uh, full credits go to her. But for sure, when she sent um, us this image to 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 for this event, I was like, yeah, it's like it's perfect because it's just the idea of like gathering. As a, as a family, as a community, because um, like I, I'm seeing here, like oh look, there's like the the placemats and like the, the fork and spoon laid out, um, like just you know a table where you can be with people to eat. Because like I know, like growing up, my dad, again, my parents tried really really hard, and I think they succeeded in making sure we are connected to. Um, our culture and part of that was like making sure they cook us like Filipino food and and having me and my brother and both my parents are work in healthcare so they're very busy but whenever they could having me my brother and both of them like at one table um, and now that I live back at home like that's another like that's a thing that they try to do a lot is just have us at one table eating together um, my brother like now that I'm older I like help cook but like my brother and I will like set up the Things, mom and dad will cook and you know yeah it just reminded me of how we do family dinners just the four of us together okay it's funny because uh, I've been resting for a while and in bed for a bit so because uh, yeah I'm under bed. when I saw this Alisa would you know would be my <laughs> I, I emailed Alisa and then asked her, Alisa, do we do Zoom, um, you know, face to face or just radio type thing? Because honestly, when I saw this, it's like, oh, it's okay. I'm okay. I can do this because it's a discussion between us, like amongst us. It's like a simple discussion of something that would, you know, will have a fruitful discussion or a funny discussion or just, you know, a simple discussion of something. So it's, when I feel like, you know, telling you guys that uh, I might not be okay tonight. And then I saw this photo, I, I, I jumped out of my bed and said, I can do this <laughs> because it's like a conversation type of thing. But in the real sense of it, it's probably this one, this drawing and this graphic shows that, you know, things are, are can be solved with everybody like, putting efforts into it, with, if everybody talks about it, if everybody shares their ideas, if we are one in this, that's how I am seeing that graphics. Like, you know, um, nothing can, can be solved when, you know, when we talk it over. I'm always telling people that if, even, even in Plato, if, if there's a problem, let's talk about it, discuss it, don't panic everything has, you know, has solution and solution first, let's talk, let's put it on the table. That's how I, I see it. <laughs> so when we say food hub, right, that's in the title and we say food, it's not really just food, right? It's, it's this whole relationship with food and, and and people as they come together around food? Yeah, exactly, Bill. It's not, even though it's like, well, it's just like food. They're just like restaurants. They're just, you know, little grocery stores. Like, they're not just that, right? They're like a connection uh, to our culture and to our heritage. It's, it's also something that our community has built for ourselves. In, in, in Metro Vancouver. Um, and 
food, especially for immigrants, isn't just food. It's like a symbol of like, like Tita Bennett said earlier, like connecting to our homeland. And um, by bringing food from our homeland and, and cooking it in like unfamiliar, <laughs> an unfamiliar territory, like it's the way for us to, to, to feel at home. Um, I, again, I grew up in Vancouver, but I actually went to school in Ontario. And like, I was, it, I was 17, so I was like immediately homesick, like the first week of being there. And like the only thing I wanted was like my parents' food and like Filipino food, you know? And like, um, I went on exchange um, to, to England for about six months. And again, same thing happened. I was like immediately homesick. And the first thing I tried to do was like find food that I was familiar with so I could cook it and feel like at home because it's like, again, it's like, it's a sense of place where there is none. I have to say that the, 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 the graphic I think is really quite important. Um, it seems simple, but it's, it's actually, it's actually not like one of the, one of the things I learned in, in heritage is, is picking photos and choosing photos. And, and how do you get ones that express the relationship, right? You, there's a lot of catalogs where you have like pic pictures of pristine buildings and, and pristine settings, but it's really difficult to find the ones with people and the ones that show the relationships. And so I think this graphic is actually quite important in, in showing the relationship and, and eliciting that, that idea of, of the culture from food and the relationships between people. Um, I just have a few more questions before we turn it over to Q&A. So Bennett, I'm mm -hmm. sorry, but I'm a little bit ashamed to admit this, right? Um, I've never actually been in your restaurant, but I, I promise that I, I will go. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> will go. But, so when I do, and, and I'm not Filipino myself, of course, right? But when I do, I'm, what do you want me to experience? And Claire, please feel free to answer too. Like, what do you, what do you feel that you know is good for me to experience when I go to the restaurant? What well, I want you to experience the warmth, the openness, the hospitality, um, the patience to explain to you what our foods are. <laughs> Um, how friendly we are, and probably the the best part is how do we connect you to our own dishes? How do we connect you and and let you feel that this is us? Yeah. That's why I'm always telling. Every, that's why I'm always telling everyone there, just to you know, just be patient and um, uh, be warm and um, always smile at them and understand and let them understand what are you trying to sell them and what are you trying to feed them, because <laughs> food, of course, you know, if if your tummy is happy, your heart will be happy also. <laughs> That's such a beautiful answer, Tita. I was literally my gut reaction because I have been to your restaurant was, yeah, just try the silog. I like, love the silog there, uh, which is like um, a kind of dish that's like a kind of like a breakfast dish. You have like the singanag, which is like the garlic rice and then like the fried egg and then silog. And I, it's hard to explain, but it's like it has it's garlic rice, it's fried egg. Um, and then there's like some meat or veg veggies on the side. It's like my favorite thing. Nita had like a beautiful answer and I'm just <laughs> telling you what to eat. But that's my that's my gut reaction because I think Silog is is pretty like, I don't know. I feel like one of those like so it's like um cuisine in the Philippines is like so diverse and varied. But I feel like Silog is one of those dishes that is just you get it everywhere and it's like different everywhere you go. So I feel like still try try a silog dish. Yeah, we have different palette, of, of course, but but we have the same way of you know of uh, engaging people. We have the same way of being open to everybody who's coming in, 
that's the only commonality with everybody um, like us in, in this business when you are like, you know, uh, in, in this retail market. Um, the commonality is for you to welcome everyone who's coming in. That they are, they are welcome, that they feel warm, they feel comfortable. But, but the food, the taste of, of the food itself, uh, it's totally different. Your palate may, might not like our adobo, your palate might not like our sisig, but you would like our caldereta. It's, that's how it is. But the openness and the warmth, you can feel it there. I definitely make sure of that. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, um, I have some holiday coming up soon, or I hope I have some holiday coming up soon. Um, so I'll see you soon. Um, I just want to say, do you guys see the, does everyone see what's in the chat there? You see Eddie's comment. It's such a warm comment. Thank you, Eddie. It says, I will take you there. I will introduce you to the most unique experience of eating. Thank you for such a warm comment. So um, just, just one more before we go to Q&A. Um, so what's next with this? So there's this development, right? So what is next for you? What are you hoping for? Um, on a in a business sense, uh, we just, well, I'm not against gentrification, of course. I'm really not against it. it it's, it's something that we cannot control of. Uh, it, it's, it's just that, uh, yeah, I'm getting emotional again, so. Pardon me. <clears throat> this, has been, this has been the very same. <laughs> oh, sorry, folks. I'm so emotional person, so. <clears throat> it's okay, take your time. This has been the very same. <clears throat> neighborhood. <clears throat> that retained all of our memories and the very same neighborhood that reflected our heritage, as you've said, Bill. Um, being displaced from this community will be ignorant of all the hard work and efforts that minority groups have put forth uh, in order to reach the best lifestyle uh, they can afford to themselves for their family. Again, I'm not against gentrification, but I am against the notion that gentr gentrification must come coupled with the decimation on an established cultural neighborhood. I feel so emotional because I'm talking about my customers, our customers, especially the seniors living in the area. It's like you'd see them in the morning, like chatting over just a piece of suman, right? Chatting with their friends, like, you know, um, pulling their trolleys with lots of bakery products from K-Market or Sari Sari and Kumari, uh, getting their sisig from Pampanga's Cuisine, getting the best caldereta in town in Plato. Like those things, <laughs> you know, um, those, those things I am against the notion of just cutting it off just like that because of gentrification sorry okay don't apologize to that like your emotions are very fair i think i've definitely cried over this <laughs> um, because we're then... the, you know honestly uh, uh, being a government employee myself before, uh, it's being in, in the government, sir, uh, uh, 
serving for about 15 years. You may not believe it, but I'm always uh, wishing that we Filipinos be known for what we are, be known for what we can give, be known for what our capacity and ability could be given the chance of living in a place like this where all opportunities are. That's why you hear where, that's why we, we chose to migrate. We chose to live in this place. Um, it's always my ambition when we, I go abroad, like in a foreign service to bring out Filipinos together and let them know that wherever they are, we are this in on the same route. We came from one motherland and we need to help each other support and be fair with one another. Thank you, Tita. Um, moving forward, I hope that these businesses stay, of course. Um, mostly because our community built this here, right? Like Tita Bennett said, before Plato, before Kumare, before Pampanga, there was like decades of other businesses that were there. Um, we built this community with the help of other immigrants who, who came into Joyce Collingwood. It's so unfair. Um, us to build something like this and then to kind of have it taken away without the ability to say anything um, about it. And I, I know we have to go to Q&A, but I, I want to tell like a brief story about like, again, one of my earliest memories. Uh, I went to Collingwood Neighborhood House. My first day there, I went to like one of their like preschool programs when I was three um, and I managed to sneak away. <laughs> because I was a bad kid <laughs> at three years old. I did not want to go to preschool. I wanted to go to my mom. Um, and obviously, because three-year-olds don't have a great sense of direction, uh, I got lost immediately. Um, and despite, I just remember this so viscerally, despite being so terrified because I didn't know where I was, I was like, okay, I just need to find like the store, like the grocery store because I go there a lot and those people know my mom and they'll be able to find, if I go there and I find that store, I'll find the people who own it and they'll be able to find my mom. Even as a three-year-old, like I knew the importance of this, of these like businesses to the community, to me, like would they have been able to find my mom? Probably. <laughs> my mom didn't leave the area. She, she just went to the washroom. Uh, but you know what I mean? Like, it's just, I'm hoping that moving forward, um, there's just more consideration for what this community is now um, and that it was the way it is now uh, is because of the work of like immigrants not just Filipino immigrants, Chinese immigrants. Like, you know, like that is a community of immigrants and we've built that and we deserve to have a say in how it continues to be built and um, how we can move forward to, to keep our heritage and culture in that place. Um, and it is really important because Annette mentioned that she gets a lot of workers there. It's because it's right next to the SkyTrain. It, it, it's easy as they go to work, go home from work, they can just stop at Joyce get the food, feed their families, and rest for a little, you know? Um, yeah, I just, I just hope moving forward, obviously I want to keep these businesses, but sometimes, you know, developments are just more powerful than you. And, and that sucks, right? Um, but, I, but I hope our community continues to, like, support these businesses, support these cultural food hubs, because that's what they are. They're not just businesses, they're, you know, places of our culture. And I hope 
you know, we continue to demand a space for ourselves in the city, you know, because it's not about, again, it's just, it's never just about food or it's never just about businesses or developing. It's about whether, it's about whether the city is sending the message that we belong here. And when stuff like this happens, it sends a message that we don't belong here, even though we built this, even though we do belong here and we've made a space for ourselves here. Thank you to you two so much for being so um, open and, and, and frank about how you feel and sharing very sort of private thoughts and personal thoughts. Um, so we're into Q&A now. Um, we have a first question, and this is a good transition question. Um, how can other communities, how can anybody support you? What can we do to support you? Uh, Tisa Bennett, would you like to go ahead? Yeah. As a business owner? Well, we've been supported for about a year now <laughs> since that big billboards uh, was put in. And we just want you guys to continue to support us. It's, it's not just being the business, as I am stressing here. It's about what we built. It's about the sense of when we were when when we are there, we were like we feel like we really belong, right? That's where we are comfortable with. That's where we can be us. That's where we can be me, or you know, you guys can be you, without you know, without thinking on what to do. We can speak Tagalog anytime. We can speak our dialect anytime, and. Um, people would understand. Um, yeah, a great support already with what you're doing with you younger generations. I, I feel so overwhelmed really with what you're doing. Uh, I, I told my other business owners that um, it, it's really overwhelming um, seeing you guys um, doing this voluntarily. Uh, like spending your days, your time. I know everybody's busy. And let's just continue. Let's just move on. Let's do this together. The, the graphic shows, let's do this together, talk it over and move forward to it. Let them hear us. Let, let them see us and hear us until, you know, until they, they, they get our message. We're not again, them, um, uh, building the vibrancy of Vancouver. It, it's just the preservation of what we already put in. Yeah, so yeah, please just continue and help us to be heard and to be seen. Thank you. Yeah, I think we just don't want to be left behind while Vancouver continues to build and grow. Again, we we built this community after decades to, together with each other, um, and we shouldn't be left behind by that. Um, we uh, currently we have a, a coalition of organizations uh, called it's for short it's called JSAN, but it's called uh, the Joy Street Action Network. Slice Mango is part of that. We have to lie on. Uh, we have a lot of other organizations in there that I'm sorry that I'm not naming all of you. Um, I know a few members are attending uh, this, uh, which I really appreciate. Uh, but basically, it's just a coalition of, JSON is a coalition of organizations that are following development closely and, um, and you know, just, just, wor just working to make sure there's a way for us to, for the Filipino community to, to stay present in Joyce Collingwood. Um, and 
continue to make sure that our community has a voice in the ever-changing nature of, of Joyce Collingwood and the city. Um, so I think a, a really concrete way of, um, you know, like continuing to support these business, businesses is just, yeah, keep an eye on the developments that are happening in this neighborhood. Um, attend um, other organizations' events to stay updated. Um, Heritage Vancouver Society uh, is going to be having uh, a shape like a, an event in 2022. I don't remember the name of it, but in 2022, that's going to be like a follow up to this event. Um, like, go to that event, you know, just keep hearing, like, listening, I guess, and participating. Um, because I'm sure that a lot of you are here because this is your community too. And like Tita Bennett says, we all have to do this together. Yes, I'll talk about the next event um, towards the end, but there's a couple more questions, right? So uh, first from Pat, um, are there affordable opportunities for mixed use in the proposed developments for Filipino businesses? Is it, so is there like an offer for um, a similar space for you to come back to, I guess, right? Um, are the uh, developers interested? Are they listening? Yes. Um, have you heard? Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, after what you've done, uh, after those, you know, show ups in front of uh, the restaurants, uh, they emailed us and uh, they told us, they, they asked us and, and um, ask us to choose which, you know, which space do we need? What, what, uh, how big do we need? Uh, and are we willing to go back? Definitely everyone wants to go back because uh, like Pampanga, they've been there for decades already. So for sure, they've been wanting to come back. I haven't heard from them, but, uh, or from the other owners, if we do have the same feeling that uh, we just, I just, we or I just want to preserve the area no matter what. Uh, but yeah, they, they, they send us an email let us choose from amongst, I guess, four. Originally, uh, I was told that it's only two commercial spaces that they would be providing because they would be renting because uh, they'll give it to Vancouver Public Library, which is, you know, one of the important uh, facilities in the community. And then suddenly it became four. So they said for now it's they're replanning it, or I don't know if they will submit another drawing about it. But yeah, they told us they're going to be four and ask us of our willingness to come back. Claire, but, any comments? Uh, yeah, actually, I'm really glad to hear that, Tita. Again, but just a reminder, but, there are six businesses. But right after, <laughs> but right after asking but that us. That was right after we kicked up the class, exactly. Um, yeah, I, one of our demands during the Slice of Support campaign was that the six businesses that are currently there um, would be allowed to return, it, like if a development were to happen, because that's what we are thinking, like worst case scenario, the development is happening, whether we like it or not. So one of our demands to the developers were like, okay, you can build this building, but you need to let these six businesses come back together because they're important and they belong here. Um, so I'm actually like thrilled to hear that they reached out to you. I mean, four, four spaces still isn't what we yeah, were hoping I, for, but you know. I think I've mentioned that before, but um, some, someone also asked me uh, if, if I'm okay with the food court style for all Filipinos. And I, I told them, yeah. For whatever it will be, it, it's I, I don't mind because it's not just the business that I'm preserving here, but unfortunately, I've also heard that uh, some businesses doesn't want that scenario. So <laughs> I don't know. I probably I I don't really know the plan after those emails. No more. Um. So there's an actual follow-up question to this. Um, 
And so I want to ask that first, but I want to see if, if the person asking a question, Pat, um, would you like to uh, um, unmute yourself and, and ask the question yourself? If not, I can ask it, but it might be good for, for Claire and Bennett to see you or hear you ask it. Oh, okay, Pat, I'm sorry. Pat, are you comfortable asking the question and unmuting yourself or would you like Bill to ask the question? You can just type in the chat too, if you're uncomfortable. We just thought it might be nice for our speakers to hear some voices from tonight's audience. Thanks. Sorry, Bill. Oh, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, so this is a proposed development. Do you know what the time frame might be for this? Like, would you have to be out of business for like a year or two, or how, how, how much time would people have to be without their Filipino food at that location? Okay. I don't know, really. <laughs> um, when we when we were doing this with you, with you guys, uh, they said it's two years. And then they signed me off for another just three years. I don't know if that's going to be three years, really. Uh, because I was told last year when we had the uh, town hall, it's going to be like two years. But I'm, I'm quite surprised with what's going on right now. Because there's on my side, there's a newly bid, built, uh, they renovated it for a franchise of a Korean chicken. So I'm, I'm, I'm really like I, in a business sense, I'm really surprised that, you know, a, a, a franchisee would, you know, occupy that side with, you, we all know on a business sense that franchise is really expensive and for you to just stay there for three years it's something it's it's a gamble so I that's actually like you know I'm happy having them beside me because that's a good sign for me for us but I don't know um, sometimes things go so fast Uh, sorry, Pat, that's all I know. <laughs> I think there was also an important sort of question related to that is, even if you can come back, will it be affordable for you enough to come back, right? So, um, Carmen has a question. Carmen, do you want to ask your question? Do you want to unmute and ask your question? Hi, can you hear me? Okay. Thank you. Um, thanks so much for sharing your stories. Um, I really felt uh, the feelings and your passion. And thank you for all your hard work. Um, my question is around um, what, what would you like to see and what is your vision for um, five to 10 years in this area? Okay. You want to answer that first? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as I've said, um, we want to keep it. Even if, if I'm like 70, 80 years old, we want to have it. That's a heritage. Um, not just, you know, it, it's something that it is worth keeping. It's, it is the hard work, as I've said earlier, of everybody not just the businesses itself, it, it's the people who's coming in. You know, um, uh, St. Mary's, uh, one of the biggest Catholic church in Metro Vancouver lives there. So I think when, when this uh, Filipino hub, food hub will be removed, uh, not so much will go there or they will be really sad of going. Uh, five, 10 years from now, I'm wishing that we could come back just in case this, this displacement would happen. Just to preserve, you know, the things that we are working for now, the things that we are being, that brought us together. This is such a good thing because it is 
now that we, um, I am saying that Filipinos are being united into one special thing of preserving our Filipino culture. It's really, um, my, my, my heart is full seeing, especially the younger generations right now, they're doing the best they can. So those things, it's worth, you know, it's worth fighting for it. It's, it's worth uh, wishing that we could stay longer or much more so more than 10 years or forever. <laughs> Thank you, Tita. Yeah, I mean, like, oh man, five to 10 years is gonna just, sometimes you're like, yeah, 10 years is so long. And then suddenly you graduated <laughs> university and you're <laughs> back living with your parents. Um, I think like in, in five to 10 years, I, I really would still like to see, like, obviously it's just, it's gonna change, right? But I would still really love to see Joyce Collingwood um, be a neighborhood of, of immigrants, be a neighborhood that is still like has like Filipino culture, Filipino food. Um, Tita Bennett mentioned St. Mary's Catholic Church. So St. Mary's is like not only just like a Catholic church in the area, but it's like it has a huge population of, of Filipino Catholics that, that attend uh, mass there. I have lots of stories about St. Mary's because that was the first church my parents took me to. And for a long time, it was like one of the only churches in, in, in Metro Vancouver that had the Galog masses. And I remember being dragged to the Galog masses by my parents, even though I didn't understand the Galog because they wanted to, to attend mass in the Galog. You know, there's a sense of like familiarity and being able to, at least for them, attend mass in a language that, you know, their second language technically. Um, but yeah, I, I hope in like five, 10 years, it's, it's still gonna be a cultural hub for Filipinos. Like it's a place where, you know, if you're like newly immigrated or if you're just visiting and you're Filipino or you want Filipino food, you know, just, oh, just go to Joyce Collingwood, you know? Because that's what it's always been for me growing up here um, was I want Filipino food or I want snacks. <laughs> go, go to Joyce Collingwood because it's, easy, it's accessible. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what it's going to be like in five to 10 years, but that's what I hope that, you know, we're still there. And we're still creating space for ourselves there. Yeah, we're still together. <laughs> Alisa, do you have a question? Yeah, thanks, Bill. Um, yeah, again, I, I just want to say again, maraming salamat po, Tita Vinette and Claire for, for tonight. I, I mean, Sydney and I have kind of come up with a question. Uh, we noticed tonight you really shared a lot of stories and what those stories mean to you. And you're sort of painting the neighborhood for us with all of your stories tonight. So maraming salamat for that. Um, so our question is, you know, for example, Bennett's story about the local seniors who share Suman and rely on these food spaces for their connections and social networks was really powerful. I think you can see in the chat, a lot of the people attending today and some of my friends mess texting me about it. We're like, oh my gosh, that was so powerful. Um, that said, stories are, you know, they seem to be such an important part of heritage. At least I know as a volunteer at Heritage Vancouver Society, it is. Um, what is the importance of stories to you and of sharing your stories about the Joyce Collingwood neighborhood? Thanks. I, I can go ahead because I, I do have like an immediate answer to this. Um, so I'm also like, other than co-founding Slicingo, <laughs> I also write. So stories are just like, it's my medium. You know, it's, it's where I put all of my soul into. Um, and I find stories are like a wonderful way to connect with others. Um, because, you know, I, I'm also, just for context, Islam is a psychology major. Humans aren't great at just taking facts in. Like, we're just not good at that. Um, but we are great at taking in stories. Um, when we listen to stories, when we hear stories, um, our, our, our emotions shift, our, our way of thinking can shift, right? Because stories are that powerful. 
um, because stories are a way to connect the storyteller with whoever's listening. Um, and that like human connection is what changes things, not facts, <laughs> not talking at people about, you know, just again, like about like facts or, or numbers or stuff like that. That doesn't, that doesn't connect you with another person a lot of the time. What connects you with other people is, is, is stories because stories are what make up our lives. Um, Tita Bennett and I were telling stories all night because that's just the best way to talk about a neighborhood that means so much to us. That is part of our identity. I hope that answers the question. I've forgotten what it was now. Yeah, I thought so stories have to be. Yeah, simple stories that could uh simple stories like like when i call a friend and just simply mentioning joyce they will be there for me no more explanation on where is it exactly no more explanation of you know of is it comfortable to be there no more explanation of uh, do we belong there? Those stories, simple stories like um, the seniors uh, helping them while walking when you see them pulling their trolley, right? Those stories that, you know, other ethnic group that we are sharing the place with, that they are happy with us being together in the area. Uh, simple, Th those simple to us listening, but it is what I call also important stories that make this hub worth, you know, fighting for and, um, or to be considered by the city or the government. Yeah, S yeah, simple but important. Alisa, did you want to share the Jamboard? Oh, yeah. So yeah, if folks have some time, maybe in the, if folks want to stay for the next five minutes or so. Actually, I'm wondering, um, Kathleen of Slice Mango has been moderating the Jamboard for us. Kathleen, did you want to share the Jamboard? And if do you want to share the Jamboard, Kathleen? Sure, give me a moment to figure out how to share my screen. Okay, quick. So we'll share the Jamboard and then we'll, I'll talk about what's next in terms of um, our programming. Great, thank you. Thank you, Kathleen, thanks, Bill. Whoa. And these are also including um, the majority of the Zoom comments that have been coming in, in terms of people sharing um, comments throughout the conversation, as well as their own stories. So it's been really cool to kind of moderate um, throughout the event and see all of these show up. And it's so wonderful to just see all of these, um, these notes in one place. So thank you for everyone who's contributing tonight. I know as we're reading all this, uh, I hope I'm not interrupting anyone's thoughts. Uh, but I also just wanted to like thank you, Tita Bennett, and I guess everyone else who's here. I know, Tita, you mentioned a lot about like the younger generation and like the youth doing all this work, but it's like not just us. <laughs> like, it's been like wonderful to have these conversations with my parents, with, you know, Titas and Titos and Atas and Cuyas and, and having all these intergenerational conversations about um, what Joyce Collingwood means to our community and just having conversations about our community intergenerationally has been really impactful to me. And, um, you know, it's, it's not just the youth, right? Like, obviously, we're, I, I appreciate everyone like acknowledging 
the work that we're we're doing as young people, but also it just means so much to, to be doing this work alongside, again, Ates, Goyas, Titas, Titos, Lolos, and Lolas. It, it means so much. And I just wanted to acknowledge that um, because it's important that we, again, come together as a community. So I just want to thank everybody. Uh, and I'll just take the next two minutes to wrap up, if that's OK. So I want to just say that this event is really uh, a team effort tonight. And I just want to thank, you know, first of all, all Bennett and, and Claire for, for joining us. Uh, even though Bennett, you know, you're not feeling, you've not been feeling so well for the past few days, but thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Um, I really want to thank Sydney. Sydney is the one that came up with the listening room name. Um, I want to thank Elisa Sida Jesus, who's been a real um, factor in, in helping us put together this series, not just this tonight's event. Um, Kathleen, who's doing Jamboard, but we've also been in many meetings. Thank you, JP, for supporting us. And ACAM. Thank you, Sue, for running tech. Um, is there anybody else I forgot? Let me know if there's anyone else I forgot. Thank you, Bill. Bye. Thank you, Bill, for moderating. <laughs> so just very quickly, the so listening room is, is a second event, right? We had a, a, a initial event called Reading Room several months ago. And Reading Room was a smaller event. And that's really meant for us to engage on the topic by ourselves. It's self-learning. Listening room is to listen to people in a community. So tonight we've listened to people in community. We got some comments on, on, on chat. We got comments on Jamboard. And, and we may even keep Jamboard open for the next while. Because what's going to happen is we're going to take what we learn to the next event, Shaping Vancouver. And what Shaping Vancouver is, is to take what we heard you know, tonight we've heard this is heritage, this has meaning. So what do we do about that, right? There's these stories, we have these stories and stories don't factor into our form of planning right now. There are other forms of planning that factor in stories, but you know, in our sort of current form of planning, which is more, I guess, entrepreneurial, factor, stories don't factor into that form of planning. So what are we gonna do about that? Is what shaping Vancouver in 2022, Will be about so i hope everyone can join us for that and we'll let you know um please keep participating in um in in the jam program keep it up right uh we'll we'll figure out a way to inform you and tell your friends um please uh go to the restaurant i will um so yeah thank you everyone for tonight and hope to see you soon have a good holiday and, and holiday season Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for listening. Listening means a lot. Listening to someone means a lot. So much so being together. Thank you.